Uh, what have I just witnessed, man? Oh my god. Newcastle United versus Spurs. Honestly, unbelievable. Today we're doing the player ratings of this video. Make sure you leave a like, that, subscribe to the channel. The support on the recent video. It's been out for like 20 minutes and I'm grinding these videos out. Because honestly, what on earth has happened with all? Any new ones watching, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Any Spurs fans watching, let me know your thoughts on the game. What's the reaction I button at the top corner? Uh, just, just about there. Bit high up, but... But about, about, about there, just click there for the reaction. It was, it was a great one. PRM's my initial reaction on the game. But honestly, lads, unbelievable. In today's video, we'll look at the player ratings, rate the players from 1 to 10. Yes, we got really lucky at the end. And that's what that's the highlight of the game now. But we can't deny we were shit. Second half, we're a lot better. But I don't know if that was down just to Tottenham take the foot off the gas or we really went for it. I think it was a bit of both, to be honest. But we'll go through my player ratings now. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And let's start off with my man of the match, Carl Darlow. So Carl Darlow in goal, honestly. So sad to see the brother get injured. And the games that he's played, he hasn't been too bad in any of them. We'll start off with, obviously, West Ham. He was great. Uh, Brighton, a game to forget about him, but he wasn't at fault for anything today. Superb. He was really unlucky to concede, to be honest, because of one player just not marking his man. We'll get on to him in a second. But honestly, Darlow, second minute of the game, they have a free kick and he scooped it out of the goal to then have the reaction to save Harry Kane's next shot. Unbelievable from Carl Darlow. Just the initial thought, just to quickly get that. And it was, it was fantastic. Uh, he made really good saves throughout the full game. And he did get around the match from the Premier League, I'm pretty sure. So for me, I'm I'm only I'm gonna give Carl Darlow a nine out of ten. He would have got a ten if we won the game, but we drew the game and we didn't play great. So that's why Carl Darlow's getting a nine, but hundred percent man of the match in the whole match. Next up in right back, Javier Manquillo of about right wing back. We were playing a five back until about the until the first substitute. We really went for it in the second half, but in the first half. Mankio had that right hand side to himself. Almond was pushing a bit more into the inside, so all that right hand side was his. And he tried to use it, and it was really hard for him. He had Son on that side, causing a lot of problems. Kane had a was pushing over to the left a couple of times, but I didn't think Javi Mankio was obviously too great today. I'm going to give him a, a, a five out of ten. Aye. I'll do the first centre back, Isaac Hayden. Uh, I thought I thought we were going to be playing with normal four two four four two or four two three one, but no, it was a five four one today. And Isaac Hayden played centre back, and honestly, he was fine. Honestly, didn't put a foot wrong. I can't really remember what Hayden really done wrong. Controlled the game fine. Had his men. Uh, Don had made a good save, and yeah, had to clear it really quickly. And have a great bit of reaction from a Newcastle player in Isaac Hayden. I'm going to give Isaac Hayden the same as Javier Manquillo a 5 out of 10. Next up in centre-back, we're going to be doing Jamal Lascelles, the captain. He went down a couple of times today. One, I think, a ball hit off. I think it hit off his cup, to be honest. And uh, another time he went down for an ankle injury, but he carried on. He's the captain of the football club. He's got to set that high bar. And if he's injured and still play throughout that game, I can only clap my hands to him and say well done. Because honestly, a player who's injured, could he just go, nah, I want to come off gaffer. But he wants this for this football club. He wants to do the best for this football club. And honestly, play with an injury, which I think he did. Fair play to the lad. Captain of the football club. Uh, today, performance-wise, wasn't great, to be honest. But play with that injury uh, from about the 50th minute. Fair play to him. He also got the first injury in the first half, and then the second half he got the the ball off his cock. So I'm going to give Jamal Lascelles, uh, you know what, a 5 out of 10 as well. Federico Fernandez is the final centre-back in, in the Newcastle team. He was okay today. I feel like, I don't think it's a time to change him, but it would be nice to see Clark get a little run in, into the team. I like, Fernandez last season, unplayable. You couldn't get, you, no one could touch him. This season, he hasn't been at that level, but honestly, He's been great since we've uh, signed him. And today's one of them games where he wasn't absolutely amazing, but he wasn't bad. And he tried to control the game with, with Lascelles and Hayden. It's the only good thing about when we play five at the back, we always have that good line and that good defence and that rocking defence where it's really hard to, for the defence to break down. And when they do, we've got to rely on the keeper and the keeper superb today. I'm going to give Fernandez a 5 out of 10, like what I've given everyone else so far, Bardalo. And next up, the left wing back, we're going to do Matt Ritchie. Thank God he came off injured because he would have tried to claim that penalty. He really would have. He, tried to, he would have tried to got that penalty. 
and try to score it, which you probably would have missed anyways. If anyone on Twitter was watching this video, you would have seen my thoughts on him. Everything went wrong from the day. Everything was bad. For their goal, his fault. Couldn't put a ball in the box. Couldn't attack. Couldn't pass. Couldn't do anything. And for Lee Ryan, I'd give him a 4 out of 10. Is that embarrassing, Lee? If you're watching this, Lee, I'm the real player of it in TR. I do the real stuff, not you. But, er... Uh, Matt Ritchie, 1 out of 10. Midfield now, the two centre mids will do. Jeff Henrik. All I can remember what he'd done was that awful, awful shot in the second half. It was laughable. He thought it was close. It was, I reckon it was a good, a good, about a good five metres off the goal. Four metres. It was, it was literally the goal's in front of him like that. He's in the middle of the goal and he hits it so far to the left. But that's the only thing I can remember Jeff Hendrick doing in the game, to be honest. Uh, first half, really, really quiet. And that, like that against Brighton, he was really, really quiet in that game. And let's just hope Fraser wasn't injured. Let's just hope he's like not like match fit. Let's hope Fraser can start against Burnley. Yeah, Jeff Hendrick could be playing against his old team, which is always like a questionable. Do you play your players against your, their old team? But we'll have to wait and see about them videos soon. But for me, Jeff Hendrick, a 3 out of 10. Next up, John Joe Shelby. And you like like what I've said all since John Shelby signed for the club, you'll be so good one game and so bad the next. And today it was one of the bad games for him. Yeah, he put the ball in for Cavill to get the penalty, but honestly, he just wasn't great, was he? Too many long balls, trying too much, think the ball's always at him. No, mate, just, just play the simple way. It's the only way where we're going to get somewhere by playing simple football. And for me, Shelby wasn't great today and I'm going to give him a 2 out of 10. Next up in the attack, we'll start off with the right midfielder. We'll do Miggy. Miggy Amiron. All season, we've wanted him to start and he does start and he wasn't he wasn't terrible, but he, he wasn't too bad. He wasn't great. Uh Throughout the season, he's got loads of assists. He's got his first goal. He's off the mark. And Miggy today, he wasn't terrible, but he didn't stand out in the game like a couple of a couple of the other players. I'm going to give Miggy like what I've given everyone else a bang average performance for me five out of ten. Joe Linton next, and he's on the left hand side. Obviously, he got two goals against Morecambe in midweek, and he comes on Sunday. And it's his special game. He got his first goal at the club at the stadium. He played, and he played in the left mid role. And to be honest, lads, for me, he was our best outfield player throughout the full game. He had that chance in the second half where he literally, he turned from being, I don't know, uh, Fred, the Brazilian striker, to R9 Ronaldo. Like, literally, he turned two Tottenham players inside out, put a ball, I don't know if it was a cross or a shot, either one of the two, it was a really close chance. And he was better, he looked confident, he, was, he actually ran with the ball. So, as I say, Joe Linton, he'll turn back or he'll just... Pass it in the middle. He's running with the ball. And you need that from a big, strong lad like himself. And honestly, I think I feel like he had a really good performance today. 7 out of 10 for me for Joe Linton. And the Mags goal scorer, Callum Wilson, with the penalty. I was so happy he took it and scored it. Because I thought Andy Cowell was going to take it from what I seen on Twitter. But Wilson stepped up and Wilson scored it. He was... He was so isolated today in a 5-4-1. He was getting balls to him where he had to hold the ball up where we know Callum Wilson isn't that type of striker. And trying to play it off where he couldn't really have Totten players all over him throughout the full game. But that penalty is obviously going to put his rating up, obviously. For the for doing that in the 97th minute, a step before a penalty and put it away, if there's fans there or not, fair play to the lad. I'm going to give Wilson a 6 out of 10 today. He couldn't do much with... His performance from being so isolated. He didn't have that many touches, but he scored that penalty that got Newcastle United a point. Next up, we'll do the substitute. Starting over the first one was Jamal Lewis. Thankfully, he's not been out for long. That that injury that he got last week could have been life-changing. That, that, that could have put him blind, right? But thankfully, thankfully, he's okay and he came on. And since he came on, we looked like a better team. Jamal Lewis, he was on for about 25 to 30 minutes. I'm going to give Jamal Lewis a solid 5 out of 10. Next substitute was Jacob Murphy. And Bruce has said he's not going to send him out alone. He was so good against Morecambe midweek. He was fantastic. But he just wasn't the same today. Obviously, it's Spurs and whatnot. It's his first Premier League game since Chelsea 2018, I think. Oh, no, it was a bit later. Uh, 
since the Rafa days. That was last time Murphy played a Premier League game. Back probably, probably back in about January. Probably about uh, Blackburn when we beat them four two. That might have been the last time Jacob Murphy played properly for Newcastle United. And he came in today. He didn't really do much, but. He didn't really have that much time. I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. And finally, the man who got the penalty, that was a penalty, Andy Cavill. That's what you do, right? You don't start him, right? You bring him on every time. He has that presence where you can bring him on and he scares defenders. He will want to start every game. It's his boyhood club. He'll want to start every game. But for the sake of how we want to play, we've got to bring him on. Don't start Andy Cavill. Bring him on. He's a much different player. Like, fair enough, start him there and there. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying bench him every game and then bring him on. Start him there and there, but don't, like, constantly play him. Like, he started the first two Premier League games. He was great versus West Ham and really, really shit versus Brighton. But, honestly, he won that penalty. He was an aerial threat. And he, he made him just look a, a lot more like, oh, let's just go for it. Let's just hoof the ball up the cavil and see what he can do with it. And that's what happened in the game. We just went, yeah. Cavill, get it, see what you can do with it. And he got with the penalty, Wilson put it away. Uh, for me, Andy Cavill, for, for the sake of winning the penalty and changing the game, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Right then, lads, that's the end of the player ratings. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, honestly, if we lost that game, it would be a lot different. But to get that penalty in the end, it was so relieving. And thank God we did. Anyways, lads, I'll see you all in the next video, which will be the preview for the Newport game. How are the lads? What's the reaction? And if you haven't already, come on. Wilson is the GOAT. So far, come on.